And from the routines and the surprises of our life, we gather here on this sunny day, surrounded by friends and strangers. We gather to join in God's symphony of grace, to feel God's love and to share God's love, to celebrate God's presence. Whether we are here in person or worshiping at home, it is good to worship together. As always, we have a lot to celebrate in our church, um, lots of wonderful events happening. Please note that on Friday, um, that's November 22nd, in the Friendship Room will be our first of our new youth group for ages 13 to 18. So if you know people who might be interested in this, um, please help spread the word. Next Saturday, we will be having a benefit concert here at the church, Horizons of Benefit Concert. It'll be a fundraiser for the Hanover Refugee Committee, and they are raising funds to sponsor our Syrian family who is currently in their sixth year at a refugee camp. Um, the music will be by Heather Somers, Doug Tielli, Sean Donald, and friends. And there will also be a silent auction during that day. It's been announced several times that we have enough people that an interest in having a Christmas wreath workshop. So Catherine Danko will be leading that. That will be on November 27th at 7 p.m. And the cost is $50. If you have any questions, please contact Catherine. Or to register, please contact Catherine. Please note that we are going to be having a congregational meeting during worship, at the very end of worship, will be a quick meeting on December 1st. One of the things that um, the roles that people serve in the church is as trustees, looking after the investments, looking after um, a lot of things in the church. But um, we have several people who have put their name forward to be trustees, Jen Olivero, George Blanchard, Jerry Asling. Um, so we need to vote them in at a congregational meeting. So please plan on spending a couple extra minutes on December 1st as we um, elect new trustees. If you are interested in being a trustee or would like to know more about that, please speak with me. As well as mentioned last week, the MMP is holding a cheese sale so you can stock up for your Christmas cheese. I, I hear Santa likes cheese with the cookies. And, um, the information's in the bulletin about that, as well as Santa likes gumdrop cake. So um, you can purchase your gumdrop cakes, the order forms on the kitchen door, and thank you for Craft Plus for your weeks upon weeks of, of baking. It always smells really good in here when Craft Plus is baking downstairs. We have our angel tree set up again this year at the back of the church for donations of gifts to the Salvation Army. Um, for Christmas time, you can find a tag there. Take the tag. It says uh, um, a gender and an age, and you can bring back the gift you purchased by December 12th. And Sally has an announcement for us today. Good morning. So our bus trip is running this Thursday, so I think everyone um, has been filled in, but just in case, just make sure you are in the church parking lot at quarter to 10 in the morning. And it looks like the weather's even maybe going to cooperate. I think it's uh, right now they have, they call for showers. So showers is much better than snowstorms, so that would be good. Um, Nifty 90s, stay tuned, there should be um, uh, an invite coming your way fairly soon, I believe, for December the 12th, which is a Thursday. So uh, you'll just be watching for that. And those who are have turned 90 um, are welcome to come, or if you are in your 90th year. So if I've missed you somehow, just make sure that you indicate to me and you could be part of this great club. Thirdly, with our bus, our, our book club, I am really pumped today. I received one of the books that we're studying right now and our next study session is on November 25th. It's called The New Farm. And the author, uh, Brent Preston, who lives fairly local, um, he has agreed to come and chat with us. So I'm, go yeah, I'm going to open it up to the general population, and uh, it'll be there'll be more information on that to come. But it's really it's an awesome book. So if you haven't read it, um, we're looking at the uh, end of January when he'll be coming, and we'll run it in an evening <clears throat> so that everyone can come. 
So anyway, thanks. I've been hearing really good stuff about the book, and when Sally told me about the authors coming, she was, she was really excited, and when she mentioned it, I got a great view. I could see other people brighten up, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. Thank you, Sally, for all your work in ministry in the church. Are there any celebrations or sorrows people would like to share today? Any birthdays or anniversaries, special events? Then we remember that as we gather to worship today on our memorial hymn sing Sunday, that for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. And their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. As we worship today, we recognize that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe, and Anishinaabek people and the Métis people. We pray that God may lead us ever in the work of right relationship. Let us take a moment to still our hearts and still our lives as we center ourselves in this time, in this community, and in God's presence. God is here, God is now, we are here, we are now. Come, let us worship. Our opening hymn today is, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. And we remember today, Osborne and Helen Bennett, Joseph and Doris Olivero, Doug Bentley, Peter Price, Ruth Pepler, Kay McCallum, Duncan McCallum, Dorothy Magwood, Morris and Luella Van Eck, Albert and Jane Blackmore, Black, Albert and Jane Blackburn, and all the names we name now silently. Let us sing, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
And as we remember our loved ones today, we remember the ancestors of our faith, written through scripture, written through this church, written through our lives. Let us join in our centering words. For Abraham and Sarah, our ancestors in faith, and all who journey into the unknown, trusting God's promise. For Jacob's deceitful younger brother, yet chosen by God, as father of all, For Moses, the lawgiver, and Aaron, the priest, and all who lead God's people to freedom and newness of life. Let us bless God. Thanks be to God. For Esther and Deborah, saviors of their nation, and for all who dare to act courageously at God's call. For Hannah and Ruth, and all who through love and devotion witness to the for Isaiah, John the Baptist, and all the prophets, and all who speak the truth without counting the costs. Let us bless God, and thanks be to God. For Peter and Paul and the apostles, who preach the gospel to all people, and for all who take the good news to the ends of the earth. For Barnabas, Silas, and Timothy, and for all who bring encouragement and steadfastness. For the writers of the Gospels, and for all who bring the faith of Christ alive for each generation. Let us bless God. Thanks be to God. For the martyrs and peacemakers of our time, who shine as lights in the darkness. For all the unsung heroes and heroines of our faith, whose names are known to God alone. For all those in our own lives who have revealed to us the love of God and shown to us the way of holiness. For all those we name today and those held in our loving us, let us bless God. Thanks be to God. For all those who have built up this church, sharing the fruits of their hands, labor, love, and vision, and shaped a community where all may find welcome and healing, let us bless God. Thanks be to God. Let us rejoice and praise him with thankful hearts and glorify our God in whom they put their trust. And we join in prayer. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we light our Christ candle today. <clears throat> Remembering that long ago, people gathered around Jesus and said, Who are you? He said, I am the light of the world. And later he said, And you, you are also light. May the light of Christ shine brightly in our lives and all around us. And our gift of music today is what a friend we have in Jesus in memory of Kathleen McGee Burgess.
thank you, choir. And at the young and anyone else who would like to join us, would like to come up to the front. You brought another toy. And it can move, but I can't move it on there because it will break. I don't want to get the wheel there because oh. it will break. You have to show me later. You have to show all of us later, maybe downstairs at coffee time? Yeah. Okay. So you've got a tiger? It's or a cat? A cat. Tiger. A, ti a rainbow tiger. A rainbow tiger that can move on its own. And we got a reindeer and well, we got. It doesn't move on its own. I have to go. Okay. Like, also, well, okay, you've got to walk it. I see. Like a leash, yeah. And you got a reindeer. It is a leash. It is. What it can do. <laughs> the leash can come off too. That's really cool. So remember, after coffee time, you have to show us how it works. That'll be really cool. A walk a dog. Yeah. Walk a tiger. <laughs> so you got. I love how you bring all your stuffed toys to show me every. I've got something to show you. Okay. Different, different toys, you're right. I've got something special to show you though, ready? Ta-da! We already saw that. You already saw it. But did you know that this was a gift to me in August? And even though it was new to me, it's about 33 years old. This is called a stole. So people who lead worship, like me, ministers, wear a stole. It helps us remember that we're leading worship, that we're, we're remembering God and Jesus and our scripture stories, that we're helping people in our congregations. And this stole was given about 33 years ago to my father when he was ordained from my grandmother, from his mom. And every week as I look at this one, I've got several like it that are part of a set. I think about my grandma. Her name was Darlene Cottrell. And I think about her. And I was wondering today, how do we remember people? Remember people that maybe have, have died, like my grandmother, or that I, you don't get to see all the time, like I remember my dad when I wear this too. My sister didn't die, she just, yeah. she's just really far away. So far. How do you remember your sister? Because she's far away. You can draw pictures of people, yeah. My cousin just couldn't talk to them, they were really far away, like unicorns here. Yeah. And the way I remember them is that anytime I play um, Minecraft, we always do Minecraft together. So yeah. I can actually remember that. So we have, you can draw a picture of them, you can do something that you used to do together or that you like to do together, yeah, like playing Minecraft. How else do we remember people? We can look at things that we have from them. Anyone else have ways to remember? Huh? Yeah. Things, you've things you've been taught, yeah. Or maybe also sometimes do you ever find yourself doing something that maybe a parent or grandparent used to do and you're like, oh, I know exactly where that came from. Yeah, in a neat way. There's lots of ways we can remember. And today one of the ways we're remembering is we're singing hymns. We're singing hymns that give thanks to God as we give thanks to people who meant a lot in our lives. And so throughout our worship today, that's what we're going to be doing. So it's, it's good to remember people, to remember the good things that they share or have shared with us, to remember that each one of us is a gift from God and that we are blessed to meet people who go before us and who are walking beside us or playing games beside us, and to think about all the ways that we can make other people's lives better too. So you're going to go downstairs for Sunday school, but before you do, we're going to do our two things. We're going to say our Lord's Prayer and, and our blessings. And our blessings. So let's join together in the prayer of Jesus. I invite you to say it in whatever words and language is most meaningful to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And if those who are going downstairs for Sunday school would like to stand up, raise your hand, face somebody in the congregation, the choir, or at home, and repeat after me. May God bless you as you stay to hear God's message. And those who are staying here and those at home would like to raise your hand as a sign of blessing and bless our Sunday school as you stay after me. May God bless you as you go to hear God's message. May God bless you as you go to hear God's message. Have a wonderful time down in Sunday school. And we join together in singing in the quiet curve of evening as we remember Terry Heffernan, Irma Eckensweiler, Lance Widener, Jim Wilson, and Glenn McLean, and all the names we bring in the silence of our hearts. In the quiet curve of evening, Voices United 278. has been offering programs for children and youth for over 10 years in many parts of Canada. High Country United Church in Orangeville, Ontario worked with the GO Project to create an adventure camp for children grades 2 to 7. Children explore their faith and justice through unique service projects. One program involved shopping at a local grocery store and then delivering the food and diapers to the Orangeville Food Bank. The GO Project tries to bring together the two fundamental aspects of our Christian faith, which is the love of God and the love of neighbor. So we do that in an intentional way, trying to get kids in on the mission that God is already doing in our community and discerning how we might be called to be the hands and feet of the risen Christ in our communities and to do that in a way that is faithful and exciting and vibrant and vital. We do anything from crafts to songs to worship to bread baking to working at food banks to helping out in community gardens to seeing all the different types of work that's going on in our community and wondering how God is helping us to help them. What Dufferin County does very, very well is everybody shares together in Dufferin County. take them off when you put just a little bit of pressure and they pull right off then you know they're done uh -huh. okay. I've learned that Orangeville has a community garden I've learned where the food bank is if people need food they can go there they get like 50 points each month and they can spend the 50 points, like dollars. In my high school, I know that there's lots of different types of people, and so if, for example, somebody doesn't know where the food bank is and they might need access to that, 
I can let them know about that. Some people aren't that rich and they don't have a lot of food, so they might not live through the winter or the summer. So I want to at least help them live. Your gifts to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada help to support programs like this one. Thank you, and please, continue to give. And today's scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. For the words of today's reading, thanks be to God. wolf and the lamb shall lay together. It's a beautiful image of, of peace and hope. It's, um, it's interesting when, when the names get read, there are certain names that, I don't know if you feel, when that name that you remember hits, sometimes it, it stirs something inside. Um, the, la the last hymn, my, my uncle was named in that. Um, that was one of the ones I chose. And, and I thought about his life and, and how I miss him. And, and, and the, the tragic death that he he um, went through but the love that continues today we hear a passage from the book of Isaiah and this passage falls into what is called apocalyptic literature it's kind of apocalyptic light maybe it's it's a it's a, a friendlier happy vision of the future and it doesn't include some of the, the the strange imagery that other apocalyptic texts do apocalyptic stories are about end times. To understand them fully, we need to understand where they come from and what they speak to. Apocalyptic passages of scripture like we hear today appear in times of great trouble, of pain, of fear, of a deep sense of hopelessness. The prophet Isaiah in today's reading speaks into a reality where people know all too well the pain of war and loss, of grief and struggle, of hopelessness and fear. And into this place, he offers those images of hope, of life, of the future. Into this reality, the book of Isaiah speaks of God's hope at work in our lives and our world, restoring and renewing all creation into a future of love, a future of peace, of hope, and of justice. Today we're gathered 
in this place to support one another and hold one another in our memorial hymn sing. We're remembering those who have died and who have shaped our faith and our lives. This week as I sat in my office and I typed up the bulletin and as I, I put in all the names, it was a deeply moving experience. I felt honored to be typing in those names. Some of the names I recognized from the stories that you've shared with me, some of the people I, I knew. I recognized some of the names from funeral services I've officiated at. Some of the hymn choices had words like mother and son that reminded me of the connections that we share with each other. Christianity, as with all the major religions of the world, has long asserted that there always remains a connection between those who have gone before and those who live now. Many of us know this connection. We can feel this connection. We live this connection. We feel the presence of those who shaped us in the characteristics we shared that we've picked up from him, them, the wisdom and teachings they, they gave to us, the memories, how our lives are impacted and shaped by those who have gone before us. We have a strong and deep connection with those who have died and it is a time to honor and give thanks to God for all these people that we share in today. Most of us know all too well that the death of a loved one can bring a lot of pain into our lives. Many of us have walked the path of grief. It doesn't matter how old or young the person was. It doesn't always matter whether our relationship was close or distant. It doesn't matter if we knew the person for years or only a short while. Death disrupts our life and can lead us into the difficult journey of grief. Many of us also know that there's a place in grief where we can honor the lives of those who have gone before. Even in the times of crying, we can laugh and smile at the gentle memories we hold. We can honor the good things in the people who went before us. We can celebrate the time we shared, whether it was minutes or days, months, whether we knew the person or it was simply we knew them in the feeling of their presence in our lives and in our bodies. This is the hope that passages like the one we hear today from Isaiah speaks to us. We are held deeply in God's love, God who wipes away our tears, as Revelation, another apocalyptic text says. God who comforts us through all things. God who sets our feet back on the ground and leads us in hope and thanksgiving. In the words of our new creed, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. Today, friends, we give thanks. We give thanks to God for the relationship shared, for those who have walked this path of life before us and beside us. May God bless us as we remember and comfort us in those places where we hurt. Amen. Together we join in singing a hymn of hope. In the bulb there is a flower, as we remember Edna and Ralph Marshall, Dorothy and George Motherwell, Adrian Kruger, Dan and Marjorie Kobe, Jeremy and Jason Forth, Elvin and Pearl Schaub, Edna Thompson, Bill and Olive Pumphrey, and Ruby Corlett and all the names we bring in the silence of our hearts. In the bulb, there is a flower.
We celebrate the bounty of life, of life shared and life received, as we give thanks to God for all the blessings that fill our lives and as we share in the generosity of sharing our gifts of time, talent, love, food, relationship, and money. Come, let us celebrate and let us share. As we remember Doug Day, Bill and Darlene Cottrell, Monique Mowinney, Tony Voss, Claire Rogers, and all the memories, we, all those we hold in our hearts. It only takes a spark.
Accept our gifts, O God, because we need to give. Use our gifts to the greatest good they can accomplish here in our midst and far beyond our individual reach. We present them in thanksgiving for all you have given us and in gratitude for the privilege of sharing We join together in singing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, in memory of Albert and Hazel Bell, Gilbert McPhail, Marguerite Perkins, Muriel Naylor, Greta Lynch, Doug Bentley, John and Tom Bierns, Jerry Jensen, Harold Hayes, Ruth Henderson, the Reverend Roger Kett, and all the names we bring in silence. Precious Lord, take my hand. Join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, your presence flows through all creation, through each one of us, through all who we meet. Draw us into your love today. Help us to see the beauty and bounty of this life. Help us to remember and to celebrate those who have gone before us those who enriched our faith and our life, those who blessed this world, those we've named today, and those we never got to know. Help us to remember that life is a blessing, that each one of us is a gift from you to this world, that in relationship and in love, we share your presence with this whole world. We pray, O oh God, for all those who are grieving today, for all who are struggling. We pray for those awaiting for surgery and those recovering from surgery, 
for those living with difficult diagnosis. We pray for the people of Australia and California and all places dealing with natural disasters. May your love be made known in those who reach out and help. We pray today for Sandra. We pray for David. And for all those who we name now in the silence of our hearts or in spoken word. We pour out these prayers to you, God, joining them with the prayers of all creation, trusting in your great love, and open to the ways in which we can experience and share that love boldly. We pray all this in Jesus' name. As together we say, Amen. Amen. We join in singing one more step along the road, one more step along the world I go in memory of Don Beaton. Brenda, oh, I missed one. Thank you. <laughs> this is the great thing about other people. Is I, would have, I would have walked right by them, but thank you. <laughs> Let's start singing Great Is Thy Faithfulness, number 288, in memory of Scotty Duncan, Mark Duncan, Albert and Hazel Bell, Kathleen Lamont, and Vasilios Petropoulos.
for birthdays and, and someone, someone let know someone's birthday. Paul, Paul you're looking around, Paul, happy birthday. <laughs> Paul's birthday is this week. We give thanks for you and the way you bless our lives and our community each and every day. Um, can we sing? Can get the organ happy birthday? Let's say it's a happy birthday to Paul. And as we prepare to leave following our next hymn, may the love of God fill our hearts and our lives. May we go out in peace and strength. May we go out remembering that each one of us is blessed to be a blessing, a gift of God shared in this world. Go in love, go in peace, and go with God. Amen. And let us join in singing one more step along the world I go. As we remember Don Beaton, Brenda Verbal, David Prysdale, Don Garland, and Gary Kerr. And-